Uh, let's see. We watched WWF Saturday Night's main event, January 2nd, 1988, which, as you noted, was a very boring show. Yeah, let me tell you something, everybody. So, I started watching wrestling at some point in 1988, and I'm not exactly sure... I'm not exactly sure when it was. It was after... It was after the main event show. I do know that. It was probably mid-88, I would guess. But, boy, oh boy. This show felt like a total 1980s, late 80s WWF show. Every Saturday night's main event that we had watched prior to this, they didn't feel like 70s WWF shows, but they felt like they were, they were a bridge between the 70s and in the 80s. That is, in fact, what the mid-1980s were. Yes. WWE had gone national, mm -hmm. and they were in the middle of the boom period, but there were still things that they did that were way more similar to what they did in the 70s than what they ended up doing in the late 80s, early 90s, and then into perpetuity. Sure. So this show, I mean, the matches were WWF matches. They were very patterned. There was a very specific style. The building was so bright. I, I had turned the brightness down on my TV. I was fucking going blind. Uh, tons of crowd sweetening. Yes. This, this Saturday night's main event show, this was the first one that we may as well have been watching 1991 Superstars of Wrestling. That's what it was. It was modern That's WWE. True. And in every show prior to this, there were things about it. There were, you know, you see this guy coming in from this territory or whatever, and everybody's working their different styles, and the arena's a little darker, and it's a grittier. I mean, it was it was hot. It was hot as hell. But the matches were all different. Hogan's matches were all different. This was one fucking lazy in-ring show. There was one good angle. And it just felt like every fucking WWE show that I've ever seen since. I hope this was an aberration, but I guess we'll see. We shall the, see. the bloom may be off the rose with Saturday night's main events. This this didn't feel like just a bad edition of Saturday night's main event. This show felt totally different. Like, the Saturday night main event shows that we watched that we loved, those are now in the past... Yeah. And we're now in this new era. It is like when we just gone back and watched what happened on Retro Raw and SmackDown immediately after WCW died. There's a different feel to everything. It, it, yes. It feels. And in some an ways... An era is over. An era is over. And in some ways, it's similar in that it's a, the, the incoming changes feel more prefabricated and plastic and uh, by the numbers. We open with Hulk Hogan... Doing, of all things, Hindu squats. Yes. Shitty ones, but still. Dude, this fucking guy, I don't know what was going on, but he was sweating his balls off. Yes. Not only here, but, like, there's another interview before the match, and it looked like he just, he's, like, doing a promo to Waterfall. He's fucking sweating his ass off. Didn't look healthy. Looked like he'd aged a ton. This was weird. Jesse actually brought attention to it at one point. Hogan's got himself all sweated up in this warm-up. He'll have no energy in the ring tonight. So Gene goes to wish Hulk a happy new year. Hulk doesn't want to hear this. What do you mean, happy new year, little man, he says. He's ready to cross the driest desert, the deepest seas, the highest mountain. The only way it'll be a happy new year is if he can end Bundamania and get a hold of that big, nasty giant. Gene interviews the Heenan family. It's Bobby the Brain, Heenan, King Kong, Bundy, and Andre the Giant. He confirms Bobby Heenan won't be there, and Bobby says, yes, doctor's orders, I cannot be at ringside. Andre the Giant will be in my place. And Gene says, is it really doctor's orders, or is it something called fear? And they all, Heenan jumps at Gene, had to hold him back, and Bunny says it's a legit injury. Hogan was tossing him around by the neck. He won't toss me around like that. He won't toss around Andre like that. And they pointed out here, as Bobby Heenan claimed, King Kong, Bundy, and Andre the Giant, the only two men who have ever beaten Hulk Hogan. Which is, of course, a blatant lie. But 
That's what they're claiming. Uh, Bundy via, via his count out to win last time, and Andre via the disputed pin at WrestleMania 3. They show clips of Hogan throwing Heenan around by the neck, but it was all justified in Vince McMahon's view because then they show Bobby Heenan holding Hogan's leg down so he loses by count out, and Jesse just mocks him. Oh, yes. Hogan must have been withering in pain being held down by his boot like that. We have another Hogan promo. This is the one where he's just pouring sweat. Yes, he's talking about how Bundy got his arm raised last time. Lightning struck, and some are worried I'll get struck again. But not to worry, because today he met with Ronald Reagan. Yeah, they're in Washington, D.C., and he yes. had a summit... With Ronald Reagan, who, who, which, as far as I know, just mainly told Hulk Hogan that he was a Hulkamaniac. He met with the President of the United States of America to admire his large biceps and triceps, confirm he was a Hulkamaniac, and then look to get his hands on that big, nasty giant. This could have been the exact promo that Hogan could cut in 2020, actually. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, because we've been watching the evolution of Hulk Hogan here as he went from big, rowdy brawler to big, rowdy brawler with a couple of trademark spots to it is 1990, 1988, and we are in full cartoon Hulkster mode. I was just saying that I could imagine Hulk Hogan meeting with Donald Trump and Trump telling him that he's a huge Hulkamaniac and admiring his biceps. That is basically how it would go down that that's a much more plausible scenario quite frankly yes. so the first half of the match is nothing it's king kong bundy working over hulk hogan's arm like we've seen bundy now we saw him Dude. against hogan last time on the show it was great we saw him do the tag match with bundy and stud versus hogan and andre we saw uh it wasn't on saturday night's main event but they main evented a wrestlemania together we've seen these guys together a bunch of times this had to be the most boring one Oh fuck, this was so boring. Let me let me get to the let me cut to the chase. There was one good spot in the first half of the match. There was. It involved the fucking referee. They the ref is almost going to get run over, but he avoids it by doing a drop down. Hogan jumps over him like he's doing a crisscross spot. The referee leaps to his feet and then gets run over by King Kong Bundy. That was awesome. See, they did. I, I, I kind of get what you're saying because it was such a blatant tease of a ref spot, the, but the ref did the drop down. But the payoff was Hogan stands up, the ref stands up, and then Bundy just avalanches both of them. Yes. Why did he do that? I don't know. But okay. it was a spot, Vinny. It was a spot in a match was, with no other spots. It was the most exciting thing in the first half of the match. So the referee is, of course, killed. He is stretchered out. There's a second fall, and this second fall, this is really, really when car it's just Cartoon Hogan. All he wants to do now is sell, 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 lie there, lie there, lie there, lie there, lie there, body slam, Hulk up, finish, the end. And it's going to be like this now until, I don't know, 97? So, Bundy hits an avalanche. His sub finish, his setup move, sometimes it's to finish. And the, 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 the everyone's very scared, and he whips... Hogan across. He has a second avalanche. And he doesn't make a cover. He stands there. And Andre's very happy. And Bundy's very happy. Bundy tells the referee, I want a five count. Which he has not used in several years. But he's bringing back the five count. He hits the big splash. The referee counts one. The referee counts two. Hulk up. Three punches. Whip into the corner. Big leg pin. Yeah, but it wasn't even like we saw something closer to a real Hulk up last month. This was just three punches, reverse the whip, leg drop, one, two, three. It was whatever. That's all there is to a match. Man. This was the worst Hulk Hogan match we've ever seen on one of these shows. Yes. It fucking sucked. Mm -hmm. Like the there guy. Was Bundy match, by the way. Yeah, he's going to leave for a movie soon. He's dropping the title next month. I mean, he's tired. He's beat up. I mean, you could just see it in this match. It's like the laziest fucking match. But thankfully, of all the fucking people on this planet to save this show after yes. such a horrible match, yes. it's Andre the fucking giant. Yes. He gets in the ring, and it, actually, first he gets on the apron, and Hogan lays the belt down. Come on, brother. 
And so Andre, ah, not today, and he jumps uh, off the apron. Andre does the money symbol. He's not being paid for this today. Yes. And he goes to leave. So this idiot Hogan turns around. He starts flexing everything like that. All of a sudden, Andre, I don't even know how, he sneaks into the ring. Yes. He grabs Hulk Hogan from behind, and he starts to fucking throttle him. And he's throttling him, and he's squeezing him. And the best part is... Yes. They're still playing Real American. Yes. It has, in fact, come crashing down, and it hurts inside. Because there's a giant so, trying to tear his head off. So he's getting throttled, and they send down the British Bulldogs, and they can't tear Andre off. And he beats them both up by himself. He goes back to throttling Hogan. The whole locker room comes down. They're all trying to pull this guy off, but they can't. And finally, out comes Hacksaw. He fucking waffles... Andre the Giant with his 2 by 4 twice. Andre doesn't sell it, but he stops choking Hogan long enough to turn around and threaten to kill Hacksaw, mm -hmm. at which point the baby faces pull Hulk Hogan out of the ring and they drag his body to the back. This was awesome. Indeed. It saved the show. Mm -hmm. Andre's the fucking greatest monster. He's Monster Rusimov. He's a killer. He's the greatest heel. This was so good. Why didn't we see this before WrestleMania 3? That show would have been even bigger. <laughs> they got 94,000 in the building. So, yes. Uh, it's so simple because, Brian, as someone has told me, wrestling is so great, when you don't, so easy when you don't overthink it. Hulk Hogan's the unbeatable champion. Although, it is, it's like Cody Rhodes in the TNT title. He's starting to wear down. He lost my count out last time. Now he's uh, jumped by a giant from behind, but he's still jumping. He's helpless. Andre the Giant has him by the neck, and he's smiling. And his eyes are wide. He's got 87,000 teeth showing. He's smiling as he chokes him down or chokes him and chokes him. And Hogan starts to fight back briefly and then just goes out, and he's done. Out come the British Bulldogs to try to make the save. And the Bulldogs are over, but they're short. So Andre looks eight foot, eight feet tall in there with him. And they each grab an arm and they're yanking and pulling and nothing happens. Andre lets go, tosses him out of the ring, and just briefly just gives him the slightest little sneer. Like how dare they put their hands on him, make him waste his time trying to get them out of the ring. He goes back to choking Hogan down. Here's Jake Roberts. Here's Junkyard Dog. Here's Strike Force. It's not geeks. Jake Roberts is a big star. Jake, Junkyard Dog is a big star. Strike Force is the world tag team champions. These are the top guys, aside from Hogan, in the babyface locker room. They're all trying to get this giant off him. They can't. He's just ignoring them, focused they on can't. murdering. I did say that, didn't I? He's focused on murdering Hulk Hogan. Finally, Hacksaw Duggan, who is still kind of a new face in the scene, has to use a weapon, which, as you noted, barely slows the giant down. It just gets his attention long enough that Andre chases Hacksaw. Hacksaw runs for his life. The other baby faces all run for his life. Andre turns around, finds himself alone in the ring with a championship belt, smiles and holds that up in the air. You have never seen a more monstrous monster heel than Andre the Giant on this show. Oh, was, the greatest. It was the best. And Andre, he's not just a big guy and they're being a giant. He's mean. He's cocky. He's arrogant. He's a bully. He's, his facials are so awesome. and so, Such a big part of making him Andre the Giant. He had decades of experience being a giant. Yes, all over and, the world. Yeah, it's funny because like when when they brought in the Big Show in in uh, 1999 or whatever, and it was like, oh man, you know the Big Show wasn't used very well in WCW, but Vince Vince knows how to book a giant. He's going to be his Andre the Giant. And of course, three weeks later, Steve Austin pins him clean in the middle of the ring. Right. And then it was like. He never, he never was never booked recovered. like Andre. No. And when you really think about it, on the surface, yeah, you would think that Vince would know how to book Andre the Giant. But the reality was, Andre was an international superstar all over the world forever before he ended up coming to WWE and playing the Andre the Giant role, which he already knew how to play. Yes. All Vince had to do was not fuck it up. Which he didn't. He was a lot better at not fucking up in the 80s than he is today. But Vince could never, ever book somebody like Andre again. No. He never, he clearly never really got it. Andre was the one who got it, not Vince. That actually is a good point. 
That's exactly right. See, Andre was the man here. Andre was great. 